Hello and welcome back to the channel. So I've been working on the CJ, got the exhaust all built. It's not in there right now. It's actually been pulled out after it was fully welded. It's been sent off to be powder coated with high temperature uh, powder coat. Um, but basically the exhaust comes down, comes across under the uh, output from the transfer case, goes into the muffler and then tailpipe out on the driver's side in the factory position. I have the O2 sensor for my, my Sniper EFI system set right on the, um, on the three bolt flange after the collector. Um, according to, to Holly, you, you wanna have that sensor anywhere from one inch to 10 to 12 inches from the collector, from all the final collector for all um, cylinders on each bank or on that bank. Um, today what I want to work on is I want to get <clears throat> the plumbing and wiring for my in-tank uh, electric pump from Holly set up and into position get my I'm gonna mount my my fuel filter here and then bring it up to the back of the throttle body um, the throttle body where it goes in is right on the rear driver's side here of the throttle body. It's where the fuel goes in. On the passenger side, there's another one that this would be for your return. It's capped off. This will stay capped off. The nice thing about Holly's in-tank pump for the CJ, as well as I believe for others, this pump is automatically set for the PSI. It's got an internally built regula internally, uh, internal regulator in it and it's also got a return built inside of it. So you do not need to run a return line with this. <clears throat> so I'm waiting for one or two other AN fittings. I'm waiting for an extension that will allow me to come straight out here and then I'll mount my fuel pressure gauge right out just behind the filter here and clear of my um, throttle mount, throttle cable mount. And then the fuel line will be coming up from the passenger side. We're gonna run it along the fuel rail here along with the harness that we're gonna make up for the fuel pump. The Holly fuel pump comes with a four pin um, adapter, pigtail if you wanna call it, that you can solder in, you know, connect into, that will then plug in to this end. What I'm actually gonna do is I have the tools for it. I'm gonna actually take this connector apart and um, use different wires um, to extend it all the way up front so that I have, I, I, I'd rather not have a connection midline. I mean, I know I can solder it and all that, and but I'd just rather have a solid wire all the way up to wherever it, um, it, where it attaches in the engine bay. So we're gonna take this apart, we're gonna go over that. Oh, we're gonna work on putting the fuel lines together. Um, for the fuel pump, if anybody's ever done this, uh, it actually, in the instructions, says that you need to use 12 gauge wire. I talked to Holly because the interesting thing is everything in this pigtail is 16 gauge. Um, they said 16 gauge is fine, you don't have to worry about that. Um, my wire colors are not necessarily going to be identical. Um, where this pigtail would attach on the Sniper EFI harness actually powers into a blue wire. So um, on this harness, this gray wire here is actually the, the main power for the pump. So that's going to end up becoming a blue wire. This black one with a white stripe is a ground for the uh, fuel level gauge. I'm going to use a white wire for that one. Um, solid black is going to remain solid black. And this purple wire is actually the power wire for the fuel level, level gauge. And I'm going to switch that to yellow and then I'll just have them marked. Um, I would have liked to have gotten the identically, identical same color wires, but not always feasible without ordering it. So we're going to go ahead and get started and set up for that. I think the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to mount this fuel filter. Gonna mount it just inside the frame rail here. So it, I think this would be a great place. There, the muffler is gonna be over on the driver's side. The exhaust will 
be, lo be crossing behind the transfer case. It's far enough away from it. And uh, there's really going to be nothing in this location when this thing is, um, so it'll be easy to get to for changing. So we're going to go ahead and get ready to mount this up. Then we'll make up our hose, hose ends for here and here. These are going to use uh, AN fittings. Um, got them right here. It'll thread right into the uh, filter housing. And then it's got a 6AN fitting on it. And then my hoses that I'll make up will have a 6AN fitting hose end. And um, unfortunately, there is really no fitting that fits this, this barbed fitting that's on the pump. Um, you know, you, you would think that, that maybe they would design it with a almost like a almost like what you'd see on an EFI fuel injection system on a car with a quick where you could put a quick disconnect not the case um, I thought about cutting this this barb section off and then um, using a compression fitting and getting a hard line to AN um, connector where you would then have a compression fitting in here but I didn't want to risk um, I didn't want to risk screwing it up is what it comes down to so this is going to be the uh, braided hose that I'm using is going to go right on here and it's just going to get clamped like a regular rubber hose would. Um, the hose that I'm using is 6AN 3.8 braided nylon hose. Um, I've used this in many other applications before. This works really well. This one actually is a little different from the ones that I used when I did my power steering lines. Those I used the PTFE hose and then a rubber push lock hose when I did my power steering lines for the high pressure and then the low pressure return. Um, so we will go over that a bit. And uh, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna go ahead and get set up to uh, get that fuel uh, filter put in place. All right, filters installed. Now I'm gonna make up the hose. That'll take us over to the tank. That's going to be using the braided nylon hose um, with these fittings. These fittings are very similar to the ones that, that you use with the PTFE, except there's no ferrule in there. Um, once they're apart, get this apart here. Okay, this is going to slide down over the end of the hose then we're going to set it up in the vise and then this other piece gets gets screwed down into that end that you put over over this end that you put on the hose and you'll see it'll it, it'll actually it'll it'll bottom right out deep inside there you can see just inside past the threads where the hose will bottom out so we're going to go ahead and get set up and get that done okay so with that lock nut bottomed out on the end of the hose. We're now going to put that in the uh, vise, clamp it into place, and put a little lube on the other one, on the threads, and go ahead and spin that in. Okay, so after that's screwed in, um, you know, as that threaded piece threads in, you have it clamped in, you just make sure that the hose doesn't get pushed out on the other side, but bottom line, you end up basically making a compression fitting as it screws in to the, uh, the hose and um, basically locks it in place. So that one's complete. We're gonna hook it on the end of the filter, then we're gonna run it back to the tank, cut the hose, and get it clamped on. All right, filter's in place. Got the fuel line running up, clamped in place. Line is secured. I'm gonna go ahead, I think the next thing I'm gonna do is start building the harness that attaches to this to run up and then I'll be able to run it along here and then uh, they'll basically both run together up until we get up to the end of where the tub would be going into the engine bay. Okay, so if you've ever worked with these um, waterproof Adelphi connectors, um, this tab is folded down, there's little clips, little, you just take a small screwdriver, pry it up over it, Flip this open. Now these pins are locked in place, um, and then there's they're also held in by this by this little gasket here. So you can kind of usually come in here, pry this, 
There you go. And pull the pin with the little pull the pin with the uh, with the sealing gasket out. All depends on how they were put together, um, because there is technically a little locking pin in there, and then you would have a tool like this that you would put in. There we go. And that would unlock it, and it pops right out. Okay. All right. So what that's given me is, as you can see, we've got our four lines. All right. So what I'm going to do is make up the mat, the lines that are going to then connect over here. And then we'll crimp, we'll crimp up new ends on them and uh, put it all back together. There's a special crimping tool that you use to, to get this crimp here with the uh, washer in place, with the uh, washer, uh, with the gasket or sealing O-ring or whatever you want to call it in place. Then we'll be able to put it back together. And then instead of having a, connect, a, a, a waterproof connection and then wires soldered together, I'll have just one solid wire from this connection all the way to the engine bay. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and get set up with the wire and get ready to crimp those up. So I'm getting the pieces together and I just wanted to show you here's we're using the male ends as opposed to on the other side you would have female ends that have a hole in them to receive the pin but you can see the see those barbs sticking out little barbs on the side there. there you go I think we can see them there in the camera that's what locks it into the housing and when you push this little yellow handled tool in it pushes those down pushes those down so they can then slide out okay I'm gonna try and give you a demonstration on how you on how you crimp these and how you do these so I apologize try and get this on the camera and do it well all right, so first thing you want to do is you're going to put the little rubber seal on. Then you need to strip the wire uh, you know, about three-eighths of an inch. Okay. Go ahead and twist that up. Then you're going to bring the seal right up to the edge of the, of the insulation. Now, for these particular pieces, you got two areas that you're crimping first. You got these two small ones here, which will crimp the, the copper of the wire in place. And then this one is what locks the seal in place. So we're going to let me go ahead and get this in position. So I'm just going to get this locked into, into position in the crimpers. We're going to take our wire. I need to go ahead and get the copper in there. And make sure the seal is all the way in. And then crimp. Now you've got a nice seal on there. And then we're going to go ahead and... Flip this around, bring it over to where we roll the seal. And whoop. hold on a second here, didn't have it all the way in the crimper. There we go. And there you go. Now that's crimped and ready to be pushed back into the connector. I'm gonna go ahead and get the other ones ready and then we'll show you how we put that together. All right, so assembly is, is very simple. Um, I took this uh, connector over to where it attaches to my harness. 
and um, over where it attaches to my pump, just so I could double check and make sure that I had my wires, exactly what order my wires were going in. So I just wrote that on there, black, yellow, blue, and white. So now from the back side, what you're gonna do, is you're just gonna slip this in and you're gonna feel them click into place. And when they click in, they're gonna be locked in. You may not be able to hear it on the camera, but you will feel it as you're sliding these in. There we go, that one clicked. And then it's, there we go. And we got the blue one. There we go, that one clicked in nice. And then our last one is our white one. There we go. And then once you have them all in, you can then bring this piece back down. Make sure you clear your wires and click that back into place. And now you have a completely assembled connector. The wires are securely in there. You can see the pins in there. And these will then, when you slide this together with the other end, will connect with the female ends. So we're gonna go ahead and start getting, getting ready to get that set up. All right. Got our connector together. Wires all match up with the order that I wanted them in. And basically now I'm just securing up my line and, and basically making, well, I guess basically making my, making my harness. Now I'm gonna go ahead and obviously I haven't cut the wire or anything yet as I'm working it toward the front, but I'm gonna start putting some wire loom on this and securing this and working my way back from the back up to the front and probably by the time I get up to this mount up in here with both the fuel line and the uh, harness, obviously the, uh, the tub comes right to about here. Um, so, uh, you know, at that point I'll leave it loose so that it can then come up over the engine and, you know, we can obviously we'll try and stay, make sure we're staying clear of the exhaust and such. Um, but we're going to make sure we have plenty of, of extra wire so that we can get to, I'm not quite sure where the brains of the um, Sniper EFI is going to go, so I'll leave myself some extra wire so I can trim that back. Um, but I just wanted to make sure I got everything run and secure. All right. Got our harness for our fuel pump and our, you know, obviously for the fuel gauge. Um, wire loomed up, have it secured. So that it's mounted nice and secure. Unfortunately, I ran out of uh, my half inch wire loom. So I'm gonna have to get some more wire loom. I'm also waiting for the extension fitting to um, extend out to here so that I can uh, mount my uh, fuel pressure gauge. Um, so I think we're gonna go ahead and end this video. I think is long enough for today. I think I'm gonna go ahead and end it here and I'll make a part two when we finish up the rest of it, um, I hope this helped anyone out there who's doing the same thing. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them below. Like and subscribe if you like what we're doing. Thank you very much and have a great day.